Are you sitting down? Yes, ladies and gentlemen. We have a trial here at Court TV. It's all set to go on Monday. It's out of Ohio. Erica, uh, Erica Stefanko is the defendant. She's accused of murdering her husband's ex-girlfriend. It's a messy, messy situation. But it was that phone call that they say is the key to link her to this case. Chanley Painter is out there and has a report for us tonight on jury selection, which took place today. Erica Stefanko greets prospective jurors who could be deciding her fate. The 37-year-old mother has opted to stand trial for the murder of Ashley Biggs. If convicted, she faces a life sentence uh, with either parole eligibility after 25 years, 30 years, or a life without parole option. Stefanko is accused of calling in the bogus pizza order that lured Biggs to her death eight years ago. Biggs delivered the order only to be ambushed by her ex-boyfriend, Chad Cobb, Stefanko's husband at the time. The two were locked in a nasty custody dispute over their young daughter. You kind of always saw it coming. Chad was just that person who would put tracking devices on her car and you know, stalk her and everything. So you just knew it was just a matter of time. And so when you finally found out that it had happened, you were just like, part of you just knew it was coming. Biggs was beaten and shot, her body found in this field. I mean, my stomach dropped. It was, I, I, I mean, I, didn't, I couldn't think that it would even be possible for anybody to even hurt Ashley because of how sweet and kind she was. So it took a real monster to take her out. Cobb has pleaded guilty to the murder and is expected to testify against Stefanko, who divorced him shortly after his guilty plea. Stefanko's defense attorneys are expected to argue that Cobb is testifying out of spite, angry over their split. Miss uh, Stefanko, most significant to you, you need to understand if you proceed to trial, and that is your choice, if you're convicted, the most significant sentence that you face is a life sentence with the, the possibility of no parole. Do you understand that? Yes, Stefanko maintains her innocence and has rejected any discussions of a plea with prosecutors. Through counsel, it's been a complete, I am not guilty of anything, and so therefore we have not engaged anything beyond that. But this could be the last and only chance Stefanko has to limit her exposure to a life sentence if she is convicted. She was the mind and he was the muscle, I believe. She was a psychology major and he was a dishonorable discharge marine. Put two of those together. It will now be up to a jury to decide the question of Stefanko's guilt, but Ashley Biggs' friends have already made up their minds. I knew that it was just a matter of time that she would slip up, and it was just something she can get away with, but I knew if we were patient enough, time would get her, and they got her. All right, we have a jury. They've been selected. Let's bring in Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter, and this is, uh, you know, it, it's shocking news here in 2020. Number one, that we have a trial uh, taking place, and they selected a jury in a day, so uh, things are a go. They are a go. A jury in record time, Vinny. In a little more than three hours, the attorneys work together. We have a jury of 12 with five alternates. They only brought in one group of prospective jurors this morning, around 30 prospective jurors. They were pre-screened for COVID-19 and for hardship, making sure they could serve as a, a jury person for the duration of this trial. And then each side had 45 minutes which to ask the jurors questions. And they took advantage of that. They made their strikes. Now we have a jury. It is nine women eight men. They will begin on Monday with opening statements. And today the court also heard a couple of motions from both sides, the state and the defense, the prosecution asking this morning, Vinny, for a continuance, saying that because of the COVID-19 restrictions and that there is a spike in numbers of those diagnosed with COVID-19, they wanted a delay in the trial. But the judge says, no, we have all the precautions in place here. In fact, Vinny, you should walk into this courtroom. There is plexiglass everywhere you look. The jurors will be spread out in the jury box in the entire gallery. There's safety all throughout. Of course, everyone has to wear a mask as well. So she 
she overruled that motion and not much from the defense day but the defense attorney did raise one concern this morning about what his client is being fed for lunch he called it something akin to chopped up cat food but the judge inquired and it was chopped up ham but she said maybe we can work on a little something different for her lunch moving forward all right now i know you spoke with the victim's mom and this has been a long drawn out ordeal i mean we're talking eight years here how is she holding up today well Vinny, i spoke with her today and it's as if her daughter's brutal myrtle murder happened yesterday she's still very much in the grieving process she was emotional throughout the interview today ashley biggs was her only child and she really thought this day would never come for the final trial of erica stefanko in fact let's listen to what she had to say about ashley the justice in this trial is for ashley and it's also for my grandbaby um my grandbaby loved her mom and uh, she should not have had to go through this. We shouldn't have had to go through this. There was no reason for this to happen. I just want everyone to know what a kind person she was and what a great mom she was. My daughter, she was the most gentle person and that you could ever meet. Um, she loved the world. She thought the world was kind and she didn't. She trusted everyone. Her smile, her smile could light up a room. Her kindness, her smile, just her smile. Vinnie Kimberly lives in Louisiana now, eight years later. She wants so much to be here back in Summit County to be here for the trial of Erica Stefanko, but because of COVID-19 restrictions, travel restrictions, she's unable to be so, but she will be watching uh, live stream. And I know someone else who was very interested. You spoke with Ashley's best friend yesterday. And one thing that struck me about that conversation was she always suspected uh, Stefanko was a part of this. How about Ashley's mom? Does she also think that Stefanko from the beginning was a part of all this? She certainly did. In fact, she knew immediately it was Chad Cobb and Erica Stefanko. She told the police so. She, like uh, Courtney, Ashley's best friend, had this feeling that something was going to happen, and they all knew something bad was going to happen. They just didn't know when or what it may be. In fact, she spoke to me about that. Let's listen. I talked to her the night before, and she was supposed to come work with me that day. And um, I told her, I said, Ashley, I have a bad feeling. I have a feeling that he's either gonna hurt you. And uh, the next day I was called and I was told the news. I was lost for words. I couldn't speak. I couldn't think, I couldn't move. My world just ended. There was no doubt in my mind, it was Chad. I mean, Chad, Followed her, stalked her. We called the police. So uh, I knew right then it was him. He did not like her way of living and being a lesbian. Um, he did not like that lifestyle, but he knew that she was going to get custody. Kimberly told me that the detective on this case, even after Chad Cobb pled guilty to her daughter's murder, he promised her, the detective promised her that she, he would get Erica Stefanko, she said finally he kept his promise, and that's why we're here for next week. All right, speaking of next week, give folks at home just a little preview of what we can expect, what type of witnesses, what's going to happen next week. It'll be a little bit different looking of a trial. In fact, most of the witnesses will be testifying virtually, Vinny. On Monday, we're expecting opening statements, and the prosecution made a motion for a jury view of three main scenes or crime scenes in this case, but because of COVID-19, they're actually going to have those virtually. So this will be a first virtual crime scene tours for the jury inside the courtroom. We're also going to hear from the key co-defendant on Monday, Chad Cobb, and we're expecting also the daughter of Chad Cobb, Ashley Biggs, to testify at some point next week, so it's going to be jam-packed full of testimony. All right, big week coming up. Uh, rest up this weekend, Chanley. We're back in business on Monday. Thank you so much.